we were given uh, for ECCI was uh, really a state-of-the-art hub for knowledge, innovation and skills. Um, it's involving a refurbishment, so a repair and renewal of an 18th century, originally old high school building. And obviously the university and ECCI's priority was to be considering energy efficiency. There's a mixture of different spaces within the building, largely to do with knowledge share and communication, uh, but it involves uh, lecture spaces, uh, teaching spaces, uh, specifically an innovation suite, and master student study spaces it also involves uh, cafe space, other spill-out, breakout space where there's a, a good opportunity for people to interact and uh, share knowledge within the building. The location of the building we welcomed. Uh, it had already been chosen by the university and it's very central within the city. That makes a lot of sense for a low carbon building. Uh, all the significant uses within the city are local, a short walk away. We've got Old College, the Parliament and the railway station all very close by. Edinburgh is actually a very efficient, compact, relatively dense city and you could call it a low carbon city in that way. The building itself, we, we then looked at how we can connect the building back into the city and make it work efficient also, spilling out into the courtyards around it and then connecting those courtyards into the cityscape around it, including opening up some stairs down to Cowgate at the back as well. Old High School was built in 1777. Uh, that's the oldest building within the ECCI that still remains there. Prior to that, the site was actually Blackfriars Monastery, a uh, medieval monastery, just in the corner of the Flodden Wall within the old city uh, boundary. It makes it a really interesting and historic site that we're working with. The building was only a, a school for about 35 years before it was rebuilt in, in the new town and it became uh, part of the surgical hospital. Obviously Infirmary Street uh, was the infirmary just next door. Beyond that the university bought it in about 1900 and it was significantly changed including steel frame put in new concrete floors. So there was a lot of changes from its original building through to, to the building as we know it now and that's what we've been working around. Well, when we first viewed the building there was a very awkward stair in the middle of the building connecting the two significant front and rear buildings and that seemed to be the key issue that wasn't working well for um, a cohesive building that allowed communication and interaction. So our proposal was based around taking out that linking stair and then stitching together the front and back good significant parts of the existing building together again but in a way that is more open and um, conducive to communication and, and good circulation and a clear understanding of the building. There's a variety of different spaces within the building for their different uses. Uh, overall what's important is that you read this as a cohesive single building and you have a good understanding of how they relate to one another and all relate back to the central atrium circulation space. So at ground floor we have mainly public spaces, we have the teaching spaces, the cafe, breakout spaces and spaces that can be used flexibly for exhibition or conference type use. As you go up the building we also have staff offices, and then working up to an innovation suite for small growing businesses located centrally within the building. And above that, at the top of the building, is a, a master's hub that feels nice as a quiet study space at the top of the building. All of these spaces are, are connected back into, into the central atrium space visually or, or physically. The objective was to achieve a very high level BREAM assessment for the building. 
and with it being an existing historic and listed building that obviously gives a lot of challenges on how do we go about doing that. That's a mixture of common sense and looking at everything in a lot of detail. We have to look at how can we upgrade the existing wall fabric, uh, the windows and threading new technologies and services through an existing fabric as well. An example where a significant problem was, was found in looking at a rainwater harvesting tank where we came across archaeology and with it being Blackfriars Monastery there was actually a number of bodies in an area of the site which became very awkward and, and we approached that by looking at um, attenuation of water rather than rainwater harvesting as such and uh, that that was quite a successful resolution to that particular problem. Well, the archaeology was both a problem but an interesting problem to have on the site. We worked with the uh, city archaeologists and uh, private archaeologists to oversee the, the site on a watching brief basis. As the rainwater harvesting tank was going in at the front of the building, we um, uncovered some interesting uh, bodies, uh, specifically one which related to a gravestone, which I understand dates back to probably 14th century and was potentially a knight's gravestone uh, with a, a sword symbol on the grave. I also understand that what that means, it was a person of significance and high standing in the community. Uh, whether it was a knight or not, I just think it adds a lot of interest and intrigue into to who that was. There was a lot, a lot of interest on site and it makes for a very interesting story. As far as the energy within the building, the primary energy source is combined heat and power. Uh, and we're actually very lucky that the university has already had a combined heat and power system that they have then extended to the high school yards. Without that we wouldn't be looking at such a, a high level of BREAM rating and it just makes a lot of sense and is a very efficient system. The other main issues that we've been looking at is obviously specification of materials in the building. Stone, it's an existing stone building, probably can't get more efficient than reusing a stone building. Uh, local workforce, local product, fantastic, collapse, you know, very good longevity. Uh, so we've used new stone also in the, in the new parts of the building. Uh, the upper areas are in bronze. Bronze is 80% copper, which it can be uh, taken from a recycled source from telephone cables and, and what like, so that environmentally is a, is a, good, a, a good material to be using. And also timber, unusually in an existing building we've used a, a timber structure threaded within the existing building and also for the new, new sections of the building. That's very good because it actually locks in many more times carbon than it takes to use it, so you are locking in the carbon into the building and as such we've also used uh, timber studs and other timber within the, within the building. Uh, all of this construction both in the existing and the new we have done in a way which is very airtight and also vapour open so that's important for an existing building to be vapour open that it can breathe we're not uh, looking at potential problems in the future that moisture can escape just as it would have in traditional construction and we've also done the same in the new construction, obviously very efficiently with good thermal properties. The original design brief really had two parts to it. Firstly, um, we had this magnificent old building which was a, a rabbit warren inside but a great facade outside, this, this old place of learning and we wanted to turn it into a hugely sustainable building, a modern building for the 21st century. And the second part was that we wanted to design a building that delivered the, the particular outcomes that we're seeking and that is about creating a hub to allow us to bring together the private sector, the public sector, communities, academics, to try and solve problems around uh, delivering a low carbon society, a low carbon economy. So what we were interested in was both creating the space and the hub 
but also creating one which was hugely efficient in terms of energy and space. Uh, and I think if you look around, you've, you've got an extraordinary building. Um, it's, a fun, it's going to be a fantastic place to work. Um, and the number of plaudits we're getting from people who are, who are coming through the door has been great. So I think we've got a, a, a place and a space to do what we're trying to do.